everyone I filmed this video before today and um, so I'm doing this quick voiceover just to let you know that um, today on the 20th of April um, a source put out some information on Instagram to say that basically they they ran some tests and looked um, into the ingredients of the Primatech line to understand how much of the genuine product is in there in fact um, and it seems that there isn't much if any at all so uh, more on that next week. I'm planning to shoot a video to cover that subject a little bit more in depth and I'm actually really interested about this piece of news uh, But for now enjoy this video and we will catch up later now I am going to have a little bit of fun and Look at my swatches and kind of pick a few that I want to use in a fun illustration so I think I'm going to go for Rodenite Genuine. I am going to go for uh, Piemontite Genuine. I actually haven't tried mixing this color much. I just like using it as it is because I find it very unique. Some Prima Tags work well in mixing and others not so much. So we'll see what we discover today. Okay, Serpentine and Genuine. And let's see, maybe one more. So we've got four already. Maybe I'll do the Jedi Genuine. Haven't mixed that color much. Okay, so we have a few. So let me just put them here. Rhodonite Genuine, Piemontite Genuine. And then we have... Amazonite Genuine, Serpentine Genuine, and Jedi Genuine. So these are the colors I have picked. For my brush, I will use Jackson's Raven 10 0. So let's start. Okay, so the inspiration came from this cute little book that I have. It's called Striped Pears and Polka Dots The Art of Being Happy by Kirsten. Uh, Savic and you can find her on Instagram I believe she does these really cute illustrations and I'm not sure whether she does all of them in watercolor I think she uses a little bit of mixed media uh, and possibly some um, gouache as well but there are quite a few cute watercolor illustrations I think I've done a flip through for this book a very very old one but you might want to check it out it would be in the book playlist so the illustration that I got inspired by is the same as it is on the cover so her watercolor pairs and I think this is what I'm going to do today I'm just going to draw pear shapes and then drop some of the prima tags um, to achieve kind of different um, color and things like that and then we'll just finish it off with a bit of pencil which I think she might have done for the leaf part here okay so let's start something like that is quite easy and also gives you a good way of trying out a color uh, which is slightly different to a uh, just a swatch so into that I will mix up a little bit of Piemontite Genuine and just drop it in. Maybe I should have done them slightly bigger because this is going to take forever. Okay, I think I will do it bigger. Right, let's do it bigger. That's actually quite nice. Okay, so let's see what happens if we 
mix up a bit of that. I think this was Jedi Genuine. Yes, and this was Jedi Genuine with a bit of Pimentai Genuine in there, so it kind of neutralized it to a uh, grayish green, similar to Perilyn Green, I'd say. I'm going to leave some highlights, I actually quite like them in my illustrations. Here I'm going to do mostly pure pigmentite, no that's not pigmentite, that's serpentine genuine. And then into it I will drop in another colour. So let's go with the Amazonite Genuine. Okay, so we have a little selection of green pairs. Now let's do Human tie genuine. And into that I will add a touch of Amazonite genuine. Yes, this also neutralizes it really quickly. I wouldn't waste my Amazonite Genuine for that, I think, in the future. It's a beautiful color on its own. I would not mix it. So this is a very watered out Amazonite Genuine. Let's just add a touch of Serpentine Genuine, see what happens just here on the side. And then I'm just going to do Rodinite Genuine on its own. funny looking pair. I have to say I'm not enjoying mixing these colors in the slightest. I feel when they dry they just become very um, dull when you just use them, the Primatex that is, when you just use Primatex on their own, they are beautiful. As soon as you start mix Primatex with Primatex, very rarely did I find out a mix that works beautifully. Mostly if they're maybe similar colors, so like 
a couple of the green, greens work beautifully together, but other than that, they just become very, very dull looking. I mean, you can see here, if you just uh, take a pure uh, perylene green and swatch it next to it, I'm pretty sure it would look better. This, for instance, as they're going to dry now, they become even uh, less interesting, in my opinion. So, and because they are also very expensive, I'm not sure, you know, whether it's a good idea to just start mixing them. And I feel like almost that takes away from their beauty and wastes um, the color, really. I'm just going to fill up the page as I have a little bit left. Let's see what happens if we put them next to each other. Might be a bit too dry. I'm looking for my coffee break. I think I'm going to take it easy today and go get a coffee. Hmm. Yeah. They're just not doing it for me, I'm afraid. Let's just mix a few of those together. Yeah, they're not exciting me. Okay, I'm just going to do maybe two more up here and that's it. Just using up whatever I have. These are a bit dark for pears now, but <laughs> a bit too many greens I have in here. I'm quite curious to see what would happen if I would want to jazz up the colors and say add like a bright yellow or something. Let's see if I have anything. Yeah, quinacridone gold. There we go. Whether that would jazz things up a little. So let's put a generous amount of quinacridone gold. It has um, nickel azer yellow in there which is, let's see, I think it's, yeah, PY 150. That's a color that makes everything look amazing. It just shines through. So let's see if we're going to just, oh yeah, can you see what's happening here? So let's see if that's going to do something nice. Yeah, okay, so basically if you mix it with colors or pigments, actually, that are naturally quite luminous. I think that would work. So this is definitely a lovely color and you can see it actually apart from this this one here, Rod and I Genuine, everything else looks pretty dull at this point but now that we have, let's see what happens if we mix Rod and I Genuine with PY150 I mean, this isn't going to be a very accurate mix because I already have loads of things here, but yeah, that's gorgeous, isn't it? It just glows off the page. Just going to do a circle here. I don't have the space for the entire pair. So, I just had another idea and I always do that and then my videos end up being very long. So um, that idea I will leave for another video. I will go ahead, use a bit of a heat gun to dry these, see if these 
um, quinacridone gold mixes with the Primatex are still vivid after they dry. And then we do a few finishing touches and that's it. Okay, so I think I haven't mentioned that I'm using a new journal or have I? I don't think I did. So this is the Visual Journal by Strathmore. It's a watercolor paper, cold press, 300 GSM. And as you could see, the, the swatches here looked really beautiful. So we can't fold the paper for it. However, if I flip it to the mixes, this looks when, you know when you start with watercolors and you have no idea what you're doing, you mix these ugly colors, this is what it looks like. And generally, I would get such a result from student grade or craft grade watercolors where there is just too much fillers, there is not enough of good quality pigments and when you combine them also a multitude of pigments to create that color, which means that if you start mixing two colors you'll end up using six pigments for instance and that muddies things quite quickly and you get to this result. So. It's quite interesting why that is happening to Primatex. I don't know whether that's the nature of minerals that they just don't mix very well. But I did find out that if you do mix it with a uh, beautiful and luminescent regular watercolor um, pigment, that they still look interesting, the mixes. So that's an option. And that's something I might explore. But for now, let's just finish off these uh, illustrations. And I'm going to use pencils. These are my um, these are my uh, Caran d'Ache luminants. And I will just pick some colors and just finish off the illustrations, nice and easy. And then switch to another color. Oh, this needs sharpening. Clearly this pencil has been used a lot. in terms of a green. Have I just used that one? Yes. I don't have that many greens because I didn't focus on that. So let me pull out this one. What's that? Faber Castell Earth Green Yellowish. And then one more green. Let's see. What do we have here? Chromium green opaque. Oh. Okay, that's it. And now I will just put some leaves in there. Okay, so that's it. I mean, at least the pencils have helped a little bit to rescue the paper. What I would do to go ahead is probably doodle a little bit with some pants or something like that. But yeah, I, I think we have learned a lesson that uh, some of these Primatex really don't uh, 
mix very well amongst each other um, but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed this video and i will see you soon